Ready? Yep. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for pressing play. It means a lot to me. Today, I have with me Dave Rosales, a friend of mine, super talented musician from Huntington Beach, California. We're going to talk with him today, uh, see what he's been up to and what he's doing. We're going to talk about his foundation, The Brave Ones. Foundation, right, Dave? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, All right. Foundation. Cool. First and foremost, Dave, cheers. Cheers, others. What are you drinking, bud? Drinking uh, Negro Modelo. Yeah, Solid, man. It. Yeah, With a lime? Yeah. yeah, dude, that is very California. And then I got my four noses. For those who don't know, this is probably the best microbrew, if you will, in Colorado. Check it out if you can. All right, Dave. So I met you through, um, I, if I had it, if I remember correctly, it was a post I did about Warner Drive and you commented on it and then you uh, submitted your music through my website. I was hooked. Um, do you remember at that, that time? I could have sworn it was through like Close Encounters, like on Craigslist, I swear. That's <laughs> <laughs> Back page? <laughs> Back page, man. No, no, no. I, yeah, it was, uh, you were a promoter down here in Huntington Beach and um, we were a band. Uh, at that time, I was in a band called Silent Treatment, and uh, uh, you were repping Warner Drive, which is another band from LA, pretty hard. And uh, I think we just connected through that. I think we went to go see a Warner Drive show at Perks when they used to play there. I think they still do play there. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it was just pretty pretty easy going, and we had some beers and got drunk a couple times, more than a couple times. <laughs> yeah, and I think. Well, I, what's the what's the what's after drunk like blackout period? I think that having that goes good, down. Have, having a good time is what there we you go, <laughs> man. All right, man. So you you're currently in Huntington Beach right now, yeah. right? Cool. Uh, tell everybody who's watching and listening where you know, a little brief history of Dave Rosales. Uh, grew up in a place, a suburb of Los Angeles called Glendale. Um, had older brothers and sisters that kind of turned me on to different types of music, uh, from Hendrix to kind of, you know Johnny Cash to um, Van Halen, Molly Crew. You know, I was I was a kid on the block that was listening to everything a, a little bit earlier than my peers were. Mm -hmm. um, watching MTV probably before I was, you know, it, it's advisable, but um, it really kind of shaped who I was. I mean, I can remember um, watching. Guns N' Roses, Welcome to the Jungle, which really kind of uh, put a boot in my ass to like, this is this is cool, this is what you want to do. Oh, yeah, is, man. Right. There was just something about uh, Axel and Slash and Duff and the whole crew, and, and they just looked so cool. I, I, I was a little kid, and uh, you know, and and then Nirvana came along, and um, and kind of made it possible. It seemed possible that I could play guitar. Um, you know, and, and it was something I could do. And mm -hmm. got a guitar from my grandfather, um, probably like 11 or 12, and um, started playing in bands from junior high skate, you know, skateboard and play music and play at dances and, you know, um, and then there was high school bands. I was in a band called, you know, uh, Lounge Act. And, and then I went to the LA scene, probably my senior year of high school, um, I was with, I was like 18 in a band of 25, 29 year olds who I thought were ancient at the time. But thinking back on it now, it's like I must be. They were ancient. I must be like just dead now. But <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, it was it was cool and it was a good education. And I was just kind of uh, in Hollywood playing these clubs like the Coconut Teaser, uh, Martini Lounge, um, Whiskey the Roxy, all these different Dragonfly like these these places that just kind of. I cut my teeth on before I could even get into the place just because I had a guitar. I remember my girlfriend was like 17 and she, uh, I used to sneak her in just, she was the photographer basically, you know, so I'd sneak her in. And so, um, it was a real cool education and, and, uh, you know, everything from the dirty, you know, Hollywood of it, you know, bass player from Argentina that was doing coke next to me in a, in a rehearsal room to, oh, yeah. I'm going like, I got calculus in the morning. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, Dude, that, that, that's just, that's just LA, man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, a, it if was that a wasn't good happening, yeah, yeah, man, if that was, wasn't happening in LA, then man, it'd be rock and roll would be boring. You know what I'm, I'm sure, saying? You know, I'm right. sure a lot of people have that same kind of experience, you know, where you're just kind of like you're cutting your teeth and you're learning on the fly and you're just kind of soaking it all in. But that whole 
Hollywood rock thing kind of made a huge impact on me, and, and I sought it out, and um, and then I uh, got broken up with, you know, by a girl, my first love, and started writing some love songs, and that kind of spawned Silent Treatment, which was uh, a project that I had going for about 10 years or so, mm -hmm. and uh, with some great guys, great musicians, and um, it was really solid music, and... Uh, that's an understatement. Yeah. Understatement, bro. You know, <laughs> Thanks, you, you know, you know. I was a fan. You know, and if for all those watching, go check out Silent Treatment, the uh, Fear music video. Freaking love it, man. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's one of those crazy ones where it was like, I remember exactly where I was when we filmed that music video because uh, I was hungover from the night before. It was Halloween. Uh, it was the day after Halloween because we were up in San Luis Obispo on Halloween, like we would always do. We would play this little place called Frog and Beach. Uh, pub up there and got just super tanked and I remember we were like oh man we got a music video to do in the morning and you can still see like some of the eyeliner mm -hmm. uh, from from my costume the night before and uh, yeah it was it was wild times man it was it was a great time we'd take it back and uh, we did a lot a lot of good and then after that um, kind of went off and did a solo thing that wasn't didn't really know where I was gonna go but uh, knew I still wanted to play music, and um, and so I took this EP called Smile that wasn't supposed to be for anybody except for family and friends that I'd recorded, and um, started playing like hotels and wineries and doing this wine tour like up and down the coast here in California, and um, meeting up with a girl named Olivia May, and uh, she was amazing talent as well. Very, really, very talented. Released some yeah. great music, and... Mm -hmm. um, Went all around the country, did PR tours, and then uh, kind of we had our thing and, and started doing more solo stuff, you know, organically. Um, yeah, we just, uh, I've just always kind of had music and sports. Those are the two kind of like <laughs> constants in my life, you know? Uh, but uh, yeah. Very good, man. Um, you know that Too Young, Too Know Better song you did with Olivia, hands down, my favorite song. Yeah. Why? Dave. <laughs> And the reason why I'm doing this whole podcast and is to get musicians like you, you know, more exposure because I think that song "Too Young to Know Better," right, should be on the radio. Why yeah. is it? Not, why is it not on the radio? It, it actually it was on a um, it was on college radio, getting a lot of spins. Um, and so when I go on tour, I hit these markets and different things in college towns back east. And, um, you know, people. That song is just one of those songs that kind of resonates with people. And as a songwriter, you always hope that those songs are going to, you know, in Silent Treatment, we had a song called Some Other Way um, that I wrote. And, and that resonated a lot. Fear resonated a lot with people. Uh, uh, Key to My Heart is another song that resonates. And, and you just hope for these little gems, you know, that what they are, they're the singles of the album. You know, you got to kind of, yep. as a songwriter, real quick, like in a songwriter's process, it's like, there was a time where I would write songs and I would like stop at a point because I was like, oh, this song can't, it's not the one, it's not going to get me there. So I would just stop it. But mm -hmm. now you just kind of go through, I, I, re I read about this um, author's conference uh, for writers where a lady said, I now give you permission to write crap because if you don't write crap, you know, and I'm not saying anything I've written is crap, but it, you know, some stuff is better than, than mm -hmm. others. Um, it, you're never, you don't know if that crap song is going to get you to the next amazing song, that Too Young to Know Better, or the Finally Fine, or you know the uh, Every Now and Then I Can Be Friend song, or you know, um, you know, uh, Sunshine, or stuff from the new album that I have. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that's it's uh, it's always just writing. You know, I love Stephen King, and he writes Hell yeah. a ton of words a day, and you just got to keep on writing. And so that's Real what quick. I do. Yeah. Favorite, favorite Stephen King book, go. Oh, uh, it. I read that one. Oh. It was the first book that scared yeah. me, man. And it is huge. It is like, if you, drop, oh, yeah. if you drop it off, a, you know, a four-story building, it's going to kill somebody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, but, I, uh, have it, I have it. I actually have it somewhere. Um, yeah. um, but but the stand is mine. I think the stand is, the stand is good hands out my favorite book. Yeah. Well, it's like an epic kind of like thing, man. And it's right, uh, man. all encompassing. But uh, oh, it was the first book that really scared me. And I'm a big horror nut. I'm super, I love horror movies and horror books. I'm reading Stephen King's son now, Joe Hill. I read a ton by him. And um, so I think it's important to read. You know, I'm reading classics this summer. It's crazy, going off on a tangent. But but like, um, 
my my whole like kind of uh, New Year's resolution this year was to read more. And right. as a Not writer, a it's, it's so important, man. So I just read Treasure Island, which is an insanely good book. There's a reason why that's been around since like 1860. You know, right? I, I, I haven't read that book, I think, since junior high, Treasure yeah. Island. I wouldn't have gotten it if I read it in junior high. Like mm -hmm. the words are so beautiful and the poetry that he puts together, Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, I read it out loud to my daughter and I'd explain basically everything that was going on, but it was so beautiful. I was like, right. this is one of my favorite books ever. So, that's awesome, man. Yeah, man. Hey, let's talk about current day. You're, okay. you're, you're, you're going around, you're playing shows. We're going to talk about, uh, Chris Isaac and Brandy Carlisle, but who are you playing with right now? You have your, uh, found, your band of scoundrels, right? Yeah. 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 So they're a collective group of friends and, and amazing musicians that, um, all kind of, uh, get together and jam with. And, um, so when it's me with more than, you know, a trio and more then I call it David Rosales and his band of scoundrels. If it's just me or a duo, I just call it David Rosales. Mm -hmm. Um, just kind of lets people know like what to expect. And, um, you know, I, I call my kids rascals. And, uh, so like the natural progression of a rascal is a scoundrel. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it's just kind of a fun little thing. And, and, uh, but everybody that I play with, are amazing musicians. I don't play with assholes. Um, you know, if they're too much drama, I cut them out. Right. So everybody I play with is legit, and they all get referred to you by somebody. They're like, mm -hmm. somebody knows you, and so they're like, hey, this guy would be good for you. It's almost like dating, you know? Right. <laughs> you know, this guy would be great for you, the style of music you play, they get along with you. Uh, they've been good hang on tour, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of things, good hangs on tour. And, uh, I, I, I've noticed, you know, like when you when you played with uh, Brandy Carlo, yeah. you had yourself um, a drummer and a slide guitar guy, right? I, I guess I'll tell you. Uh... Yeah, it's a, a pedal steel. So that yeah. gives the real country, crystal-y kind of mm -hmm. country sound. That's, but yeah, then Jeremy sometimes Long. sometimes you have more band members. Yeah. So how, when do you decide when do you decide to be like, hey, I want, you know, five people versus, you know, two you um, know? different shows call for different things as an opener sometimes you don't get the luxury of choosing exactly what you want so i had the whole band ready to go for this last one for that brandy carlisle show but her um, agency um, thought that it'd be best since she was playing as a trio that the max i would play with is a trio so i had to kind of pick what i was going to do it was really hard for me because i was like should i go with a drummer and a bass player or should i go with a drummer and a steel player you know um and i just felt more comfortable just doing uh, drummer and steel and those are two of my favorite um, scoundrels you know two of my good good friends Jeremy Long who plays steel and then Marco Sanchez has played with me for a long time on drums so. do you do you still have the video of that concert up on your um, Facebook uh, Instagram? yeah I think I think it's all up there you can find it yeah it's, yeah. A, it's a I had uh, Pacific Amphitheater is a union venue and so um I bring my roadies along, who are actually my surf buddies here, right. um, to just hang out and kind of keep me balanced backstage and just drink beers with me and, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of hang out. But um, they, I gave them the, the job of just kind of, you know, doing the social content stuff. So they videoed the whole thing on, on all my platforms. I got anxiety for you watching that, uh, uh, whoever it was, was filming you walking behind, you know, behind yeah. the scenes. I love and that stuff, just, man. Dude, it that's, gave me anxiety. I was like, I can't like, even imagine what Dave's going through right now. Just like oh the man, nervous, so the nervous energy must have been off the That's, trip. that's like, I guess I can equate it to football. That's, you know, when you're getting the kickoff and the drum lines go in and stuff like that, you're just like amped and you're pumped to go on stage and you're ready to hit it and just kill people. And um, that's always my favorite part. Like in a in a music documentary, like you see the Chili Peppers, like. You know what they would do pre-show um or metallica just walking through the hallway up to the big stage or something and, and that was always my favorite part so i and that's the part that people don't really get to see they don't get to see that backstage stuff they don't get to see a lot of stuff but um i just kind of wanted to shed some light on it and we have some more content i had another buddy who's actual like videographer guy so he's putting together some really like good backstage bits and stuff perfect. so yeah perfect all right so let's talk about chris isaac yeah I mean that's that's a big deal. I mean, <laughs> no, it, I'm not trying to downplay Brandy Carlo. I mean, yeah, yeah. per my notes, six albums, seven seven Grammy nominations. In one year, she was nominated for six Grammys. That's pretty awesome. So she's kind of a big deal. 
However, it's kind of a big deal. She's, yeah, exactly. He's an amazing person too. So it's great. Chris Isaac. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, it's not he's... it's not the fact that you just opened up for him. It's a fact that he seemed like to be a fan of yours. Yeah, he was. Uh, well, he picked me. I don't know if Brandy's who picked me out for the opening slot at the camp theater this year, but when I opened up for Chris, he specifically chose uh, me, and he specifically went through Too Young to Know Better. He was like, that's the guy. That's, that's great. Um, he was standing side stage because my crew was, was there standing side stage, and they heard him. Um, say you know this this guy's really good i like yeah. him a lot and, uh, and i, I remember the cool picture afterwards. yeah i remember the picture it still gives me goosebumps to know yeah, that man. man you have someone like chris isaac sitting Let's... there watching you on yeah you know the big stage to me man that was just you know they're they're just awesome. fans of music too uh they're mm-hmm. just normal people they put their pants on two legs at a time just like you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> and uh right right um and uh yeah man they're it's quite an honor he um he was such a, a cool cat, and uh, I love I've loved his music for a long time. Mm-hmm. Amazing songwriter, love his vibe. But it's it's like um, you know you have these moments where you get to kind of meet some people that have been in the show for a long time. You know, like Joe Perry or you know, um, I mean, just Michael Anthony. You know, from mm-hmm. Van Halen, that was cool. Um, you know, just these cats that you kind of look up to. That you're like, oh, wow, these guys are amazing. And then there's a lot of people that you meet, and they're just you know, you're, they're your contemporaries, and you're just like, oh, it's mellow. Good to see you. You know, it, everybody's just, everybody worries about the same shit. And that's straight the, up. You know, I got two kids. I'm running around, just did swim practice. You know, I got to go do a gig later. And, you know, I'm wondering, right. like, how I'm going to eat and all of this. You know, it's like, yeah. Ah, uh, dude, but that's, that, that means something's going right. You know, when you're like, hey, man, how am I going to eat when I have a gig later? You know, I think. Yeah. And you've, you, you know, it's what is it, the Sawdust Festival you're playing, right? Yeah, in it's Laguna. This magical little festival in the canyon that's been going on for like 52 right. years, like super right. hippie. And uh, I love being part of it. And uh, right. they asked me back every year, and I just feel so, so um, just privileged. So, yeah, man. All right, so listen, yeah. you are sponsored by a guitar company. Yeah, I'm endorsed Who by is it? a Canadian guitar company called Godin. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people, it's spelled G O D I N. You mm-hmm. like, Godin, but I guess French Canadian would you say Godin? <laughs> and um, they have Siegel under their umbrella. They have a bunch of guitar companies: Siegel, Art and Luthery, who has their new Americana brand, which you've seen me play like a black, kind of mm-hmm. rustic-looking guitar, acoustic on stage. That's that's the Americana Dreadnought. Um, yeah, they're they're an amazing company, and they go. They're the only North American guitar company that goes straight from tree to to stage. Everything goes through their facility right there. Nothing gets shipped anywhere. It's all right there in line. Amazing company. Two brothers run it. Uh, the father started it. Um, you know, just can't say it. It's a, it's a little family, and I get to see them. Uh, I get to see them all and drink with them probably once a year at the NAMM show in January. How did they find um, you? That's what, that's what I know. How know, did they find Dave Rosales? They, I just went up to them, and I just started a conversation with the rep, who's a really good friend of mine, who's not with the company anymore. His name's Richard Funds. And um, and we just start struck up like a friendship. Everything is relationship based, you know. Um, whether you're on a tour with somebody, or whether you have different band members, or you and me. I mean, it's just it's all life is relationships, and you just got to build them and not be fake about it. Good, and um, and you got to foster them. And, this uh, is why this is why yeah. I think, man, exactly what you just said. Don't be fake, man. Foster your relationships, yeah. right? Because you never I mean, know. People, people right. can tell if you're just trying to like get something from them, and exactly. it's like. The minute you try and get something from somebody, it's like, dude, you're out. Like, yep. it's just people being people, you know? It's like, That's good, man. And it sounds like this, uh, this, uh, I'm gonna, and I'm going to butcher it, I apologize. Go- Godin? Go- Godin. Godin, excuse yeah. me, right. Yeah. It sounds like they're good people, man. And they, they, they see yeah. the, they see the good in you and that uh, you're a pretty genuine dude, man. Yeah, man. And they, uh, you know, they like the songwriting, um, you know, I'm not Slash. I can't play the guitar like Slash, but you know, everybody has their strengths. And mine's definitely songwriting, and right. singing, and, and the uh, voice. The yes. voice, man. Yeah. And, thanks, man. Yeah, the voice has gone through some changes. You know, whether it was silent treatment and really kind of nasally the mass singing and power singing, um, to now where it's really sweet, kind of like you know, it's a nice whiskey. It's pretty fun. It's funny that you mentioned that because yesterday when I was preparing for this. I was going through your videos, right? The the silent treatment to 
uh, Too Young to Know Better, and then uh, some of your newest stuff, and you can just see that transition of your voice. And it's yeah. pretty awesome to see, like, you know, the, the journey, if you will, to where you're yeah. at now, you know, uh, vocal-wise. Uh, let's talk about your the foundation you're involved in, because it's pretty freaking cool, man. Yeah, man. It's... um. We have a foundation we started less than a year ago, so it's still in its infancy. Uh, I don't know anybody that has a foundation. It's called, you know, so this is all kind of new to me. So I started with my wife and two of our friends who lost a child. So that kind of was a catalyst for the foundation. And then my wife and I always kind of wanted to start a foundation, but that was like a pipe dream. Like, okay, one day we'll start a foundation, you know? It's like not a reality. And then they were like, hey, let's do it. We have the lawyer, the attorney that make it a 501c3. Everything's legit, nonprofit. So it's called Brave Ones Foundation. It takes a lot to keep it up. My love, you say now, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were like, hey, can we take the title of your album? My album came out last year called Brave Ones. And um, they were like, hey, can we, let's, let's use that, you know, because what we're doing, it's a, a foundation centered around helping, um, you know, children, you know, children in need type of a thing. So there are little brave ones, you know. And uh, kids are dealt tough hands, and they don't have a choice in it. And so that's a thing that really resonated with me. And, um, you know, just kids are the Well, most, it's, it's yeah. resonating with a lot of people because yeah. you guys are getting donations like crazy. Yeah. yeah I was blown away when donations. I saw it. Yeah, yeah we're, we're doing some great stuff, specifically here in the community in, in Orange County. But we plan to spread out from there. But right now we're, we're working to build a new neuroscience playroom. Um, at uh, Children's Hospital in County. So a lot of the money that gets put into a children's hospital, LA or wherever, it goes towards oncology, kids with like cancer, uh, leukemia, those types of things, um, rightfully so. But they get so much money and they can't give it to any other unit. They don't, they don't, they have more money than what they know what to do with, basically. But there are other units like the neuroscience, like, you know, kids with epilepsy and these types of things, um, just neuro, uh, conditions that they need a lot of help too and it's crazy when you actually walk the halls and you see these kids having hundreds of seizures a day um and their playroom and these are kids these are four-year-olds these are like you know all the way up to like you know 17 year olds you know but, but little little babies to like this and it just breaks your heart man and, and crushes you like i'm a dad and it just um you know uh, kids are my whole belief is that kids are perfect um, the closest thing you'll ever get to God and um, and then environment changes them but but um, you know kids have no say in this stuff they really you know? don't and, yeah. and when they're getting uh, they go to like a, a break room with fluorescent lighting and this type of stuff and they have neuro um, conditions uh, it's tough so you need neurosensitive lighting uh, wireless EEGs so that they can go do testing and go play like a little kid you know so yeah man that's the I, I, I'm I'm so proud of what you, Kendra, Jeff, and his wife, what you guys are doing with that. I think it's, I think it's awesome. I wish more people would do it. And I even know Cheyenne. I think she has like a monthly donation that goes to you guys. Oh, amazing! Yeah, and you yeah. can go to any passive donating. Like, you can go to smile.amazon.com and designate Brave Ones Foundation for all your stuff that you normally get on on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Just normal stuff, right. and. Um, and it, a small portion of that, I am Amazon will donate to us, um, or you can just go to BraveOnesFoundation.org and donate directly. And, um, and I'll put the link down below in the yeah. description on the video, man, so that people will be able to just go and donate because I I think it's a great cause. Um, all right, man, we're gonna kind of kind of wrap this up here. So, <laughs> all right, man, give me your your top five albums. I already know what number one is because we share it, okay. right? And that is what? uh. As Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, All right, man. Sock it to me. What else you got? Uh, oh, man. Uh, any Metallica album, I think. Well, you know, even St. Anger I liked a lot. Um, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> well, Whoa. because it was a time and a place. Like, I was in Mexico listening to that, and it was, like, the only CD that I had um, at the time. But uh, I've seen Metallica so many times, and, and they're just they're just destroyed every time one of my favorite bands. So, um, but, you know, Puppets is really good. I like the viciousness of Justice. Um, Black Album is recorded just amazing. Um, Ride the Lightning has that. Who, who recorded, or who was the producer on, uh, uh, what was it, Bob Rock or whatever? Yeah, Bob Rock. He did, yeah. he did Motley Crue's Dr. Feelgood. Um, just amazing stuff. Um, 
I, I think more contemporary would be like um, Ray LaMontagne's God Will and the Creek Don't Rise, yeah. um, which is front to back, like such an amazing album and something that I've always kind of used as like, hey, let's, you know, if I can get, if I can get somewhere in here, this would be amazing. I think a lot of people don't don't listen to him and they should, you know, because oh, that, that album, man. yeah, that, well, yeah, he is. And, and you always support an artist when they go to these different places. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, his last couple albums kind of lost me a little bit. But, um, you know, that album specifically is just a, like a masterpiece, in my opinion. And then, you know, like any Zeppelin album, you know, one through four, mm-hmm. I love um, uh, just whole complete albums. I think it's a lost art. You know? Yeah. I mean, uh, one uh, from the grunge days, like Super Unknown or Alice in Chains. Um you know, Dirt is, those are fantastic albums. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, man. We're going to finish this up. What do you want to say to your fans like that, that already know you and those who don't know you, who just watched you and were just like, dude, that dude's pretty rad. I'm going to start listening to him. What do you, what do you want to say to those people? That's such an asshole. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, man, uh, just check out, you know, just keep living the, living the dream. Um, don't ever let anybody tell you to stop. Um, you know, if you got a passion for something, just go ahead and do it. Just full on. Just put your head down and go. Um, that's all the kind of positive kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I would say, yeah, just check out DavidRosalesMusic.com. Check me out. Love to see you at a show. Um, you know, touring a lot. Got this new album out and being back in the studio um, in the wintertime. We're releasing a, a Ray LaMontagne a cover song later on this year. Uh uh, which is something it's it's uh oh it's which gonna be one? A good one i which can't one? tell you that i can't oh. tell you but it's it's gonna be a heavy blues song and all the scoundrels are on it and it's um it's it's something i've kind of had in my back pocket uh for a little bit and awesome. i'm gonna release it this year with we're trying to put together a video for it and um yeah it's uh in the next album man it's gonna i'm getting let me just say i'm getting more comfortable with my rock roots so you might find some um, I don't know, higher energy type stuff on this perfect. as well. Perfect. With, with the uh, as well with the you know the kind of um, singer songwriter stuff that people have gotten used to. So. Right. Yeah. Well, well, Dave, man, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, sit down for this. I know you're busy. You got a show tonight. <laughs> Good luck on that show, man. Thank you so much, everybody else. Thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. I'll be providing links down below for Dave's page, his foundation. And uh, yeah, go ahead, like, share, comment, share with your friends, please, because this only works if you guys watch. So yeah, man, thank you, Josh, and, and to everybody out there, just keep watching. Josh is gonna have amazing guests on, and thanks, uh, buddy. Just keep trucking. He's a good dude, and just support him. So. Likewise, bud. All right, guys. All right, take care. All right, brother. Have a good day. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. That was my first attempt at recording uh, and interviewing with somebody. So being in front of the microphone, the camera, it's all new to me, so please be patient. I promise it gets better. I uh, apologize for the lighting in here. I'm at work. I just got done editing the video. Uh, it turned out pretty good. And uh, David, thank you so much, man. I know you're really busy. So thank you for taking the time out of your day. Thank you for being a good dude. Thank you for being a solid musician, man. Um, and thank you for what you're doing with your foundation with you, Kendra and Jeff and uh, Jeff's wife. So, um, I'm going to be providing links in the description below. So please visit them. Um, yeah, any comments, questions, concerns, anything like that, please. I'm, I'm, I'm a fair game, man. So I want to thank everybody again. Thank you for your support. Thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing. It means the world to me. This only works if you guys watch and you get others to watch because I really want musicians and artists, performers, everybody that I feel should be, you know, getting more attention than than they're getting. They should be on the radio, TV, etc., etc. So let's make it happen, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good day. 